Yeah, politics for the people here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, 11 o'clock block on a Thursday. When it's about voting rights, you know, are we uh, are losing it? On are we sailing right into a voting rights disaster? Uh, our guest today, Tim Apicello, Winston Welch. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Good morning. So let's begin with you, Tim. <clears throat> um, and where are we on voting rights? It's like it's not on the top of the media priority list. People used to talk about it a lot. They're not talking about it so much. Um, where are we and how much time do we have? And what are the, what are the prospects of, of running a federal um, voting statute? Um, it's not on the top of the list because infrastructure is. Um, we said earlier on in the administration that the, the Biden administration can walk and chew gum at the same time. I don't think they can. <clears throat> so infrastructure has sucked all the air out of the room. Uh, it is a priority. And I think as soon as infrastructure gets done at $1.75 trillion, uh, that they will, they will move ahead on it. And, you know, I think Joe Manchin has to look at where he is. You know, he was tasked with the responsibility of getting 10 Republican votes to come over the other side of the aisle and, and vote in a, a reasonable voting rights bill. Um, he hasn't been able to get one vote. And I think because he was a co-signator on that legislation, I'm wondering if he's now willing to look into some modification of uh, the filibuster that pertains strictly to uh, voting rights. And I think maybe he will. Uh, it's gotta be, take a certain form and a shape that he'll, he'll find that's not too onerous, but I think he'll come over and there will be some modification of a, of a filibuster and we get something done. It won't be, again, it's like the infrastructure. You don't get everything you want out of a bill. You're gonna have to, was, you know, it used to be a, a, not a dirty word, but now you're gonna have to compromise. And that's not a dirty word. That's how politics used to be. And that's, that's how it should be versus my way or the highway. Yeah, Winston, but in politics before, we didn't get a stroke by stroke conversation by conversation, caucus by caucus, point by point discussion, we find out, you know, in the newspaper that a bill had passed. Okay, it passed. And then we look at it. But the specifics are known to so many people, the specific conversations, negotiations, you know, and, and, and really it's in a huge amount of time and what do you want to call it? Oxygen, attention. Um, by the public to hear about everybody's aspirations for what's in, what's out, how much, how little. Um, is this constructive or is this a waste of time when we should be focusing other things like voting rights? Well, ideally, it, it's, it's uh, uh, that the, the people having input on all of these things is what uh, we aspire to. But in fact, as you point out, it may just create chaos, confusion, and dissent so that everything gets killed before it even has a chance to, uh, to see the, the, the light of day. And uh, that can be problematic, uh, certainly, and we see that now uh, with so many angles coming in. Now, I would like to think that, uh, that everyone sort of chiming in is exactly what we need, but when, when these positions are so hardened in advance, it makes these... Uh, for lack of a better word, kind of backroom deals where the work actually gets done and is able to get done, uh, almost impossible to do. And you, I think that J Joe Manchin, you know, and, and, and I said before, we have a, a political class or we have a, a, a ruling elite. In a sense, we do. I mean, we are in charge of those folks, but they're the ones that have to go down, drill down deep. They rely on advisors. They rely on um think uh, uh, tanks and, and associations and all types of, you know, unions or whatever to, to have input in that. But you look at Joe Manchin, and I think he probably actually is still believing that there is a, this, uh, you know, idea in the Senate that you come together, that you discuss ideas, that the best ones float to the top, that you can have this, um, uh, sort of uh, comedy in the in the Senate where you can reach across the aisles, you can meet your friends, you can say this is reasonable and rational and sane, and he fell completely flat on his face, as Tim just pointed out. Not one person crossed the aisle when he said, I, I, "I'm not going to do what you Democrats want to do. I'm going to do what what I think is best for the country." And well, I'll aren't you being charitable with him? 
Uh, aren't you being char charitable with him? I mean, the fact is he's, you know, the bottom line on this is he dragged it out for 120 days. And uh, it's, it's hard to actually get a beat on what he wants or what he has wanted. But the, but the net effect is he's dragged it out for 120 days. Yes. Um, I, and I, I almost think he's working for Mitch McConnell. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that idea was floated last week when they said, are you thinking of changing parties? And we've discussed on here that he's essentially, I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing that he's still even nominally in the Democratic Party, but he's clinging on to that for whatever reason. So he has no... You know, he could switch to being a Republican or an independent in five seconds, and, and he would not be heard in his home state, in the state that probably had the widest margin or one of them for Donald Trump. So he's he wouldn't be hurt by switching. That makes me feel like there's, I mean, he could be a plant and just to, to obstruct the Democrats, but why bother? Why not just switch over to the Republicans? I think he actually does have an old fashioned desire, which I think most of us do to, to, to bring back sanity and, um, and an ability to come together and compromise, like Tim said, on, on, on getting the work of the people done. And he has stalled but, a lot. But meanwhile, Emma, we are spending an enormous amount of time and energy following bills that are, you know, maybe Tim wins the bet between us and maybe I do, but, but yeah. there may be no infrastructure bill um, and there may be no change in the filibuster. And at the end of the day, it's a dull thud. Um, and the bottom line is with all of that, no voting bills. And let me, let me ask you, Tim, I mean, how important are the voting bills? in the larger sense, in the sense of preserving our democracy? Uh, critical. But before I answer your question, I want to get just comment on uh, a point that Winston made. I think Joe Manchin won't be elected dog catcher in West Virginia because uh, Donald Trump would label him as a rhino and whatever Donald Trump says goes. So I think J Joe Manchin would have a problem if he declared himself as at least a Republican. Now, maybe he can get away with it as an independent. I don't know. But um, I think he would have problems. And that's why I think he's sticking with the Democratic Party. Uh, Let me add to one point to your point, Tim. Uh, he may not care. At the end of the day, he has interests in coal. And while we're fiddling, he is making millions in coal. And he is pulling uh, the environmental provisions, you know, the renewable energy provisions right out of Biden's le legislation. And everybody knows it, and everybody knows why. Uh, so he may be going back there, West Virginia, a rich, rich man, and it may not matter. Yeah, okay, point well taken. To answer your question, it's absolutely critical. And I think what's critical part of it is the aspect that these states are ripping out professionals, uh, unbiased, uh, objective uh, secretaries of state and election, election officials and all these state bills that give the legislature the right to put their own people in to oversee the election. That is the most dangerous critical part of what these states are doing. And we all know how these states came about to do this because they said, of course, it was uh, Donald Trump's election was stolen from them through fraud and all the false things that they keep on drumming about. But um, so yeah, you need a, a national bill to stop the placement of your cronies to oversee and count election results. And if that doesn't get fixed and repaired, um, we're in big trouble. Uh, well, what, democracy, is, what does that mean, Democracy Tim? is at stake if that aspect does not get repaired. What scenario do you see? This is like the ghost of Christmas future out of Dickens. Yeah. What scenario do you see? We're in big trouble, but what is that? Well, okay, let's say it's, let's say that the Democrats realize that things are in jeopardy and they get out of their lazy boy armchair and they go and either fill out a mail-in ballot if they can get away with it, or they stand in line for five hours, six hours. And there's an overwhelming uh, turnout from Democrats. Well, it makes it a lot harder to uh, fudge the numbers if you're uh, counting ballots and votes. But let's say it's a close one. Let's say it's neck and neck. Uh, and you can, you can push things one way or the other if you're if your cronies are in there counting, counting ballots and um, how, they're, how they're reported. So election result is at stake here. And I, I, I think that once the Republicans get back in and, 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 and solidify these, 
these voting rights or, or, or eliminate the voting rights and solidify their, their voting bills, um, we may not see a Democratic Party back in for a long time. Yeah. Winston, there's, <clears throat> there's more here, too, isn't there? You know, there's uh, suppression. And every day that goes by without a voting bill, the suppression continues. And all these really incredible, outrageous bills in all these Republican states are, are being adopted. I think they see the vacuum as an opportunity. And they're taking these draconian, sinister steps like every day to make it worse. Um, the, the question I have for you is whether Joe Biden fully understands the importance of voting. He may say so, but does he fully understand? Here's a guy who went to the ball game. He went to Rome to see the Pope, which is very nice from a, you know, a, 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 a religious point of view, but it doesn't have too much to do with the country and policy. Uh, he's going, he's making these pitch stops around the country to pitch his infrastructure bill. Does he really have to do that? Does the country work on pitch stops these days? Can't you reach people by other ways without having to leave Washington? Um, he doesn't seem to be focusing on voting at all. So my question to you, Winston, is does he understand the priority here? Well, remember why, why Joe Biden is president. He, he's, an, he's an honorable, he's a good man. He's a, a good politician given good faith partners. But the reason why he was elected wasn't because he was Joe Biden. It was because he wasn't somebody else. And uh, we all know that um, he's not using his uh, his cabinet to the their, their full potential. I don't think he's not having Pete Buttigieg go out all the time on Fox, who loves him, apparently, and likes to have him on because he kind of talks back in a sassy way and um, gives them what they want. He's not using Kamala Harris. I don't even know where she is. Uh, you know, the attorney general is, is uh, you know, independent, and we're glad to have that. But there's a lot of other departments that could be out there pounding the pavement, getting out the message, being the Eleanor Roosevelt's uh, across the land and, and selling what we need to uh, to have sold. I mean, we need to be buying wholesale. He's also dealing with a an insane pandemic, which is not gone, by the way. And maybe, who knows, maybe his, his uh, going to the Rome, you know, the Pope did say that it is, it, it's a duty of, of, of followers of that faith to get vaccinated. So that may have helped uh, get a little push behind uh, having some moral authority from the head of the, the, the Catholic Church. Joe is, uh, Joe Biden is, um, you know, he's got so much to deal with. I don't know how he wakes up in the morning and decides what he's going to focus on, but it looks like he's getting some sort of um, some sort of infrastructure bill that's coming through. You have these obstructionist uh, two folks of, of Kristen Sistema, who I can't understand what she's thinking about, and Joe uh, uh, Manchin, who is a little seems a little bit easier. And we may say, yes, he's gotten a lot of money off of coal. I don't know, Tim, when you say about, about the, the Donald calling him a rhino and, and that he could that might be. But I think these people in West Virginia are particularly loyal to him. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll be seeing who is primary, as it were. Um, it does Trump, 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 Trump took a, a, Trump, took a West, Trump took West Virginia by 40 points. <laughs> yes, yes. He did. No, but they're, they're he solid on Joe, but, but Joe but Manchin's the only Democrat elected and the only one who could be elected with a D after his name. I don't think they're voting for him because he's a Democrat. I think they're voting for him because he's Joe Manchin. Um, and, and, his, and, and, and he was what he was, the governor, and he was a, a mayor and a congress, a, a representative. He's, oh, he's well-loved. No two ways about it. Well-loved. And he brings home the bacon as much as he can to West Virginia. So, And right now he's saying no clean energy. I, you know, if Exxon or, or Shell or Tesla wants stations around the country, you guys put them in yourself, or maybe it'll go to the states. Maybe California will put them in. I don't know how that's going to work. But Joe, is, Joe Biden's going for what he can get at this point. And at this point, it's a very truncated version of what he was looking at uh, at doing but anything at this point is going to be better than nothing yeah well but but voting i think we agree that voting is critical does he fully understand that he's been focusing on all these other things including the pope including the ball game including trips to pennsylvania and other states that pitch his infrastructure bill does he understand about voting i mean does he accept what tim has to say 
even if he does understand about voting, and let's assume that he does and that everyone around him does, including the Democrats and the Republicans, how many how many uh, voting bills have been uh, enacted uh, or in the state legislatures around the nation that are anti-voting? That uh, you know, it's it's a well. I mean, it could be it could be Winston that he and has written it off. He no, has written no, it off. No, no, no. Tim, Tim, okay, Tim, what are your thoughts about something? that? Is it possible that Joe Biden has written voting off? No, no, no. not at all. Yeah. No. But Jay, I, it was in my first answer. Um, he, he's got to get infrastructure done. He's got to show that democracy works. He's got to show that this is his only shot. You know this is his only shot. And unfortunately, because it's his only shot, they threw in the entire kitchen sink with the uh, both infrastructure bills. Was that and, a good idea? No, of course not. But you know what? The, the nature of the Senate now is such that if you don't get it in the first or second try, uh, you're in the midterm elections and it's all over. So he's trying to get as much as he can in, as fast as he can, and he knows that um, the kitchen sink's not going to work, strategy's not going to work, so he'll settle for whatever he get, but he has to get something. That's why he knows he's on the weekend of negotiations with Joe Manchin and Cinema. He knows it. He knows they, they have him yeah. over a barrel, and he'll We've give them whatever they want. This. You know, right. It's just like in a, in a business negotiation or a legal negotiation. You know, the worst possible position to be in is making two offers in a row. Yeah, it I demonstrate agree. weakness, and you will never settle on your terms that way. You will always be chasing the other guy. And that's what's happening. Manchin yeah. and Cinema say, well, well, that's not good enough. Come further. Come some more. We're not going to tell you when you actually hit pay dirt here. Just come further. Give us more, and and um, I, you know, I, I think that speaks of a, a, a <laughs> tremendous delay and also a failure. I want to address your point there because, I, you know, in all critical negotiations, you try not to get in front of the media and let it out what you're negotiating about. You keep it under wraps, and and for you know, Jayapal and and Joe Manchin and to be out in the camera each and every day talking about what they're not going to give up. It puts them in a corner so that if they do give it up, um, they look like they're not true to their word. They look like a flip flopper. So Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer should be saying to everyone, would you keep out of the cameras until we have a firm agreement, until we have a solid deal? Um, but they don't. And this is why this thing has been protracted and has, has gone on as long as it has, because all the positions become fortified and then it's harder to budge away from them. It's harder to compromise. So um, one last point, Jay, I, you know, regarding Joe Biden to the Pope, a um, lot of white male over 55 are Catholics and they're Trumpers, definitely Trumpers. And so any kind of um, photo ops that Joe Biden get with the Pope uh, would only help somewhat in that effort to try to sway them a little bit, not a lot of bit, but a little bit. Mm. How about the trip to Scotland? Well, that's that's the the environment. That's that's critical. Yeah, we got to be seen that we are we're, we're a nation of action versus lip service, and I think that's why he's willing to give up a lot of the negotiations over to a mansion because he's got to have something in his pocket before he goes to Glasgow. Okay, I just I get a guy with too much on his plate. Now he these are critical. Which... These are critical meetings that he's attending, and I I see where you're coming from. But they're still critical too. When I was a kid, you know, my mother would put a plate of food out in front of me, and it would have the peas and the carrots and the potatoes. And as as I was eating the peas, she would say, "What's the matter with my potatoes? Eat the potatoes." And then I would eat the potatoes. And a minute later, she would say, "What's wrong with my peas? You're not eating my peas." The problem is that you know the political calls are calling him, and he's dancing from the carrots to the peas to the potatoes. And I wish he'd just focus. Um, Winston. And letting his Swiss steak get cold. <laughs> Winston, you know, one of the problems that we really haven't addressed is this. <clears throat> we have all these Republican states doing voter suppression and gerrymandering. It's really horrible. There was a piece, I think, on Rachel uh, Maddow the other day where she showed you how they twisted an area, a Latino area in Texas, and made it into a non-Latino area. <laughs> Millions of people are going to be disenfranchised. Isn't
incredible what they're doing. It's shameless. But, you know, this is happening around the country. And we have suppression. We have gerrymandering. We have impossible, um, you know, provisions on voting, voting officials. Um, how the legislature can turn the vote over. I mean, I could go on. Is a, you know, at least half a dozen really, really awful things that are in the playbook. And the playbook repeats itself from state to state. Um, not exactly the same. But what's happening is, A, you know, the people are wondering what happened to infrastructure. You know, we get all this noise about it, but we don't have it. And how long do we have to wait? And what's it going to be like when it's over? They're confused. Okay, and then you hear uh, about the Roe v. Wade thing, which um, you know was also very confusing. What's going to happen here? And and the Supreme Court is going to take take it up in the Mississippi case in December. That's going to be really interesting to see. Hopefully, it resolved properly. But what I get is complete confusion because as the Republicans are undermining our voting rights all over the country. People all over the country are getting confused. What they did in, in uh, Wisconsin, does that count for me? What they did in Texas, does that count for me? What are the real voting you know, limitations? What are my voting rights? What do I have to do? Where, where's the guide? Where, where's the, you know, where's, the, where's the, the checklist of things I have to do to get the vote? And I think that as time goes by and this kind of thing happens and there are no voting rights bills in Congress, people are going to be completely confused. And then after the election, whether it's close or far, the Republicans are going to confuse it further. They're going to turn it around, turn it over, have the voting, you know, voting officials do bizarre things. Um, and nobody will know which way is up. It'll be in the courts for years about who won. Don't you see the confusion as a huge side effect of failing to pass the bills in Congress? Uh, of course. I, I'm, I'm also confused why you didn't bring up carrots in your example. You just focused on peas and and and, and uh, mashed potatoes. I got confused with the rest of it because I was like, Where, what about the carrots? I, what are, who's advocating for the carrots? And that's basically how it is in our society is we become so, uh, uh, you know, divided into little tiny cells is what, what's my cause? Is it environment? Is it abortion? Is it gay rights? Is it, uh, you know, voting rights? Is it, um, you know, balanced budget? What's my cause? And so we're not able to follow all the moving parts. It's like someone with a shell game. And, and honestly, you know, the reality is the people don't even know about the infrastructure bill. Those that do know don't know what's in it. it they barely have the, the, the faintest idea that there's something out there. This is not something people are concerned with. For voting rights, yeah, of course they want voting rights. It, it, does it make the top 10 list of the things they worry about in the morning? No, they worry about COVID. Do they have their masks? Are their kids sprayed down? Do they have to get a shot today? Do they need to be tested? Is it safe to visit their mother? Uh, you know, will they, uh, is their job secure? Uh, you know, is, is their husband getting, you know, whatever. You, you, we're confused by so many things, absolutely. And these, uh, these, these voter suppression things are gerrymandering. It's, it's been going on forever. It's just very egregious. And seeing it happening right now really is terrible. The problem, in, and you talk about for Joe Biden, he doesn't have any room to maneuver. He is at the complete... Um, you know, uh, mercy of of uh, Joe Manchin, who seems to be at least rational, um, and Kristen Sistema, who does not. But uh, I, I I can't understand what's going on in her head. So Joe doesn't have a lot of things to go. When he goes to Europe, it's at least show that he's saying we're we're going to be a part of this someday. Hopefully, we'll get our act together. It's not going to happen anytime soon. So don't hold your breath. How many? How many climate conferences have there been? There was Paris, there was uh, Brazil, there was, uh, you know, uh, others that have happened here in America that, that have, they all say the same thing. And yet we pump out more and more carbon every year because the average American doesn't know and doesn't care. And if you tell them you're going to have a tax now and here's this and they see uh, they might be watching something and they're worried about their kids getting uh, what's what's revisionist history or what do they call it? It's real history, but uh, a critical race theory. all of these things that are just shiny, flashy objects. And meanwhile, countries still burning, 
Uh, and and Joe Biden is like the firefighter with one fire truck, and he's got to put out 10 fires at the same time. And if he can get a win out of inf uh, this infrastructure bill, fine. But he's got other things to do. And I think what he needs to do is is ask his attorney general or suggest strongly that the attorney general start investigating these laws across the land for federal uh, voter rights uh, violations that are based on laws that were passed in the 60s. These are basic laws that, that we have other mechanisms to go about. It's not going to happen through Congress. Uh, it's certainly not going to happen in the state legislatures. Well, um, it may or may not happen with the Department of Justice. Tim, you look I'm like you were going to say something on that very point. Not yeah, you know, um, Winston does bring me to a thought, and that is one of the critical things that's happening right now is the threat of violence and intimidation to our public uh, election officials. And, and they're starting to quit. They're starting to resign. So the threat and imitation, uh, Im the, the tactics are working. And the Justice Department needs to get involved and stop that immediately. Um, you can't afford to lose professionals and unbiased election officials due to threats and intimidation tactics. And I'm, I'm not seeing Joe Biden getting, well, it's not Joe Biden's I issue. It's, it's really uh, the, the Garland. yeah, Garland is in the Justice Department to get involved in that kind of stuff. But that needs to move fast. Uh, and, and 2022 is right around the corner. And you just can't afford to have this. And judges are being threatened, too, by the way not just uh, election officials, school boards are being threatened. And the, all this stuff has to stop. Well, the problem is that, uh, you know, in a crisis, a political crisis, a uh, uh, constitutional crisis, um, you know, there, there has to be a, a tremendous effort. I remember the, the hanging chads, remember the hanging yeah, chads in 2000? Um, and there were lawsuits popping up like brush fires all over the country on both sides of the issue. And um, it was it was pandemonium. It was chaos legally. And, and I suggest that that is just a, a small stuff compared to what's going to happen in 2022 for the very reasons you identify. There's going to be all this litigation. But I think, you know, Winston's point and Tim's point, very good point. The Department of Justice, what's it doing? How come it doesn't get involved in voting itself? Uh, these things are outrageous, and the Department of Justice is quiet, quiet like a peep. Um, what happened here? Um, is, it, is, it, uh, is there a defensible reason for the Department of Justice not to be doing anything? What I see is the Department of Justice really isn't doing a whole lot. You know, I haven't heard anything about the insurrectionists. They essentially got away with it up till now. And, and I haven't heard anything about, um, you know, the... <clears throat> the Proud Boys and all those organizations. They're, I don't know if they're being prosecuted or not. There's some civil actions like in Charlottesville, but that's like old news. Um, where is the Department of Justice? Why did it, it not initiate some um, you know, prosecution over the insurrection or investigation or grand jury proceedings over the insurrection? It never did. Um, and now we have this voting crisis and it's nowhere to be found. Um, what's going on, Winston? You know, it's it's as if the the inner sociopath is, and psychopath has been released across the nation everywhere. You see it on, on airplane flights, you know, on meltdowns. I saw an interesting meme that said, Do you remember those kids where they were screaming in the in the carts at the supermarket and you wondered why the parents didn't stop them? <laughs> uh, guess what? Those kids have grown up now. Um, it, you know, when you have people having full scale meltdowns because of they, they got a Diet Coke instead of a Diet Pepsi or, or whatever it is, uh, they didn't want to wear their mask. They had to wear the, the what, I don't know. They had to wear their mask. All of these things. But but when it's a small scale thing, this is a human to human interaction. When you're talking about a little old lady from the League of Women Voters who's monitoring the uh, the election, she's not a Democrat or Republican. She's an American. She's a you know a Boy Scout leader, Girl Scout leader. She's just Mary Smith or Mary Tanaka. Is that adequate? And that's the person when she's she's thinking, I'm not going to sit here and 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 uh, be abused or threatened by these folks. So when you're like Tim was saying, when you're losing these basic uh, things, uh, ground ground uh, grassroots efforts in democracy, 
neighborhood boards, uh, commissions, uh, where people just are, 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 are either threatening them or having full-scale meltdowns, or people are thinking, I'm just going to go home and watch uh, The Sopranos or, or whatever's on, you know. Well, I think a lot of people do that. They're, they have fatigue. Not only fatigue on the carrots and the peas, but they have fatigue on the whole plate. And they're tired of hearing their mother saying, you have to go to the peas or the carrots now. They just want to go watch the TV now. Forget about it. You know? Okay, great. Winston, let's, let's go to closing because we, um, we have another event in the studio that we have to take care of at 1130. So take a minute and give us your closing thoughts here. Closing thoughts are that, uh, unfortunately, just like the child that's having the meltdown in the supermarket, parent needs to take them outside, pick them up and say, oh, not having this in, in, in public. This is unacceptable behavior. We need to do that as a society at large where we say, when you have these meltdowns, when you have these, these threats or this the harassment of uh, officials, whether it's a neighborhood board on up to a judge or, or commissions or, or city employees or whatever it is, you will be arrested, prosecuted. This behavior will not be tolerated. We need to enact it at the city, the state, and the federal level. And the Department of Justice and our state attorney generals need to be involved with this. And city attorneys. I agree. Totally. Thank you. Uh, Tim, your closing comment? The closing comment, no matter where we go from this point forward, there's enough vitriol from one side to the other. Specifically, the Republicans hate Joe Biden and Democrats. So it's time for the Democrats to wake up. It's time for them to realize no matter what great policies or, or great incentives we give or stimulus we give to Republicans, they hate our guts. So it's time to realize that, say, there's no pleasing them. The only way they're pleased is if they get back in power and they stay in power. So what do you have to do? You're going to have to do as Wista suggests. You're going to have to indict and prosecute, stay within the boundaries of the rule of law, but not play naive and, and simplistic. Go and play hard, play tough. Don't bring a soup ladle to a gunfight. And the second the Democrats finally realize that they're not liked, they're not loved, um, they're going to have to play tough. And, and that will that will settle the, the playing field a little bit. Clearly, we're at a tipping point. And, and the fulcrum of the tipping point is voting rights, because that's where it's going to play out. Great. That's where we're going to retain our democracy or not. Tim Apicella, Winston Welch, thank you very much, gentlemen. Politics for the people. Aloha. <laughs>